Okay, good morning and welcome to Liberty Day. All right, my name is Paul Russick and I represent the Lions Club. The Lions Club is one of a number of service clubs along with the Rotary, Kiwanis, JCs, and basically our job is to do good things for the community. One of the things that the Lions Club does is sponsor Liberty Day, which is what we're here for today, where we bring distinguished speakers in to talk to middle school students about government law and the Constitution. Today we're lucky, very lucky, to have as our speaker Judge Mark Gould. Judge Gould has been a judge since 2008 and has presided over family, civil, and criminal cases. Judge Gould graduated from the University of Connecticut and then Lewis and Clark Law School in Portland, Oregon. Oregon. He practiced law in Connecticut for 24 years at law firms and in a corporate setting, and he is also a professor at Quinnipiac, a professor of law at Quinnipiac University. Uh, Judge Gould will give his presentation and then we'll take questions at the end, so please save your questions until the end of his formal presentation. And I'll give you Judge Gould. Thank you. Well, good morning. How's everybody doing? Friday, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, you've studied the Constitution, right? Yeah. Okay. And you understand all of it. We have our Washingtons, we have our Madisons, so you went through the whole thing, right? Okay. Who in here thinks they're an expert on the Constitution? Somebody has to. The Washingtons and Madisons must, right? Well, how, how about this? How about the, uh, the fellow back there that has the eagle on his shirt who was a Washington? That would be you. Do me a favor, pass this back in here. Okay. <laughs> All right. You are. His name is Thomas Mohawk. Thanks. Thomas, right? You go by Thomas or Tom? All right. <laughs> That's the right answer for a judge. <laughs> what you've got in front of you is a copy of the First Amendment. All right. You're going to be my constitutional expert for this morning. All right? So while I'm talking for a minute, you can feel free to go ahead and read that if you want, okay? To yourself, okay? Now, here's the big quiz. If you pay attention to the Constitution, I'll give you a clue on this. The question I'm going to ask you, the answer is on the wall right outside this room. Does anybody here know the first three words in the Constitution? Okay, how about in there? All right, perfect. This group right in here. You're going to be the We the People Chorus, okay? Right here, okay? Now you're going to lead this for me. What's going to happen is when I point at you, I just need you to say We the People, all right? We're going to practice it one time. You ready? We the People. Perfect. <laughs> How are you making out with the First Amendment? You read it already? All right, you're ready to go. What we're going to do is we're going to focus on that part of the First Amendment that has to do with freedom of speech. Okay? And what's the key word in freedom of speech? Three words, you can pick one of them. Perfect. Freedom. This is a free country, right? And you should be allowed to do whatever you want in a free country. Don't you think? Would you agree with me about that? Okay. Freedom is the key word. So that's what we're going to talk about today is what the First Amendment does and are there any restrictions? Can the government say to you, no, you can't do that? But it, even if you can do it, we're going to restrict your ability to do it. Okay? But just remember that. Freedom. Okay? Let's try that one more time. You guys? We the people. Very good. <laughs> They're good, aren't they? Okay. Here's what we're going to talk about. And we're going to use me as the example. I have, because you know, I'm, I'm a judge and I'm kind of strange and I wear a robe and all kinds of stuff and I have white hair. I do a lot of odd things, okay? And one of the things that I like to do, and I was going to do it this morning, but I didn't want to scare anybody, was when I come to an event like this in a public building, you know, be it a school or a theater or the mall or whatever it may be, I like to really go in there and get people's attention. Now, usually if you have white hair and you wear a robe, you can get people's attention anyway, but I don't wear my robe when I go to the theater or the mall. Maybe I should, I don't know. So when I come in a public place like a school or a theater or the mall, the first thing I do is scream out, fire. <laughs> it's amazing how much attention you get when you do that, okay? 
And every time I do it, somebody throws me out of the theater, or throws me out of the mall, or throws me out of the school. And they tell me, if you do that again, I'll have you arrested. Which, being a judge, scares me. Okay? Now, you all studied the Constitution. You all had your Constitutional Convention. And the question is, if I have freedom of speech or freedom of communication in this country, why can't I do that? Now, let's go to the constitutional expert. Is there anything in the First Amendment that says, oh, by the way, you can't yell fire in a public place? Is there anything in there that says that? No. You're doing great. <laughs> no wonder you were Washington. All right. So, I can do that. I can go in a public place. I can run in and scream fire. Freedom, right? Yeah, everybody said, yeah, you can do that. There's nothing in the amendment that says I can't. And trust me, there's really not much else in the Constitution that says I can't. Except for one problem. That's good. You guys follow orders really well. I like that. Here's the thing. If I do that in a public place, what am I doing? Anybody? Go ahead. Just yell it out. Yeah. Right? At the very least, danger, stampede, people running around, people are going to get hurt. But there's still nothing in the Constitution that says I can't do it, right? Okay. The reason for that is, and the reason that I can't do it, and the reason that that's essentially against the law is... People. Because people are going to get hurt. Those are the first three words in the Constitution. It may say certain things, but the government at times can regulate or prohibit you from doing something like that. Okay? Everybody with me so far? Yeah? Okay. Now, I'm told, a lawyer tells me I can't do it. Now I'm really upset. So I've got to figure out what to do. So what I do now is, rather than running in that public place, what I do is I put on my shirt. Usually I wear a shirt that says Yukon on it. But when I go to public places sometimes, I put on a shirt that says, guess what? Fire. Fire. On the shirt. I shouldn't say that too loud. On the shirt. <laughs> OK? How about that? Anything in the Constitution, Thomas the expert, formerly Washington. With the eagle on your shirt, is there anything in the First Amendment that says I can't do that? No. Okay. Good. I can do that. Yes? Constitutionally, it's not there. doesn't say I can't do it, so I can do it. Should I point to my chorus? We the people. I didn't point yet. <laughs> Should I? These guys are really good. Should I point to my we the people chorus? on that. Is that different? Why is it di Everybody says yes. Somebody tell me why it's different. Good answer. Everybody hear that? You'll be Washington next time. <laughs> That's the difference. If I've got some expression on my shirt, it's not going to raise the same reaction, okay? But you got to be careful, okay? Because what happens if on my shirt, I, you guys are eighth grade, right? Yeah. What happens if on my shirt, I put on there, all eighth graders at Dodd Middle School chief? Now, truth of defense, we know it. What about that? You said I could do fire, and that's good. Okay. How about that? Because now what's happening? We people. I'm starting to identify people now. I'm starting to say something about people specifically. Is there anything in there that says I can't put that on my shirt? No. You're doing well so far. 
How about that? Is that okay? Notice I pointed to my chorus. It's not okay. It's not okay. Why not? Because you pointed to your chorus. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> You're good too. You're going to grow up to be a lawyer. So <laughs> See the difference there? With just the word fire on there. Now, it may be, that may be offensive to somebody, and somebody may think just because I have that on my shirt, there's a fire someplace. But I'm not screaming out fire. I'm not causing a panic. I'm not upsetting or possibly injuring the people, okay? When I have that on my shirt, and it says something specifically about a group of people, there's that word again, people, there could be some harm there, okay? You may walk around with that shirt on, and I walk around Cheshire with that shirt on, and all of a sudden people may start to get the idea yeah, the eighth graders at Dodd cheat. And you don't want that reputation. And you don't cheat. You don't cheat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure. Just don't forget, your teachers are in the room. So. <laughs> See the difference? So now we've got a little bit of a restriction. Okay? But it doesn't say anything about that in the First Amendment, does it, Thomas? just has like freedom of speech and freedom of the press and all that kind of stuff, right? doesn't say anything about what I put on my shirt. So how can the government tell me I can't do that? Because I'm harming somebody potentially, all right? And in the perfect world, we don't want that, okay? Let's take the same example and expand it out a little bit. Anybody here got a Facebook page? Okay. On the Facebook page, I've got one. On the Facebook page, I write, well, I spoke at Dodd School today, and by the way, did you guys all know that everybody at Dodd School cheats? And I put up a picture of a couple of you. Okay? Say anything about that in there? Okay. So I could do that, right? So far? Okay. We do. I got a point first, okay. You guys are good. See the thing there? Now, in our world now, with social media, I'm going to have more people, because believe it or not, I actually do have one or two friends on Facebook. I'm going to have more people looking at that than might if I walked in here with a t-shirt on and walked out, okay? That's going to be something that's going to affect the people, okay? So now it doesn't say it in the amendment, Thomas has convinced me of that, but once again, well, maybe you can't do that. Maybe you can't do that, okay? How about if on my Facebook page or on a text, I have, by the way, since I'm a judge, I have all your cell phone numbers. Got quiet in there all of a sudden, didn't it? And I'm going to send out a text to all of you that says, FIRE, in capital letters. Can I do that? Yeah. Right? Now what's the problem? Okay. So the lady over here before basically said that if I'm in a situation where nobody's going to be afraid, I'm okay. But in that situation, if all you got that text, what happens? You're going to react, right? That's a problem. That's a problem. How about if I text to you or anybody on Twitter in here? Good, good. I text to you, or I send a tweet out to you. It's amazing that an old man with white hair knows what a tweet is, right? <laughs> I send a tweet out to you that says, fire. You going to react? Can I do that? Anything? Is there anything in the First Amendment about Twitter or Facebook, by the way? <laughs> you got to understand, this, the First Amendment was written in 1787, right after I was born. And you got to understand that there wasn't much out there at that time as far as media was concerned. 
There was only, at that time, one newspaper in this country. Anybody want to take a guess at what it was? The Congressional Record. That was one of them. But that's an official record. I'm talking about a newspaper, newspaper. Everybody remember Boston newspapers? Boston Globe. You're close. The Hartford Current. That was the only newspaper in the country. So at that time, we had a lot less concern about communication. At that time, when people communicated, they literally went down to the town green and ran off bills and handed them out, not, not dollar bills, ran off bills and handed them to people. Okay? And what's interesting about today with the internet is that's kind of what we've gone back to with social media. You send a tweet out. You send this old thing called an email out. Okay? You post something on Facebook. You're doing essentially what they did in the town green in 1787. So things have come back around. But now there's so much more exposure. If I do that in the town green in 1787 in Cheshire, you know, there's what? Maybe... 200 people, tops. Well, you send out something on your Facebook page, or you send out a tweet, the whole world's looking at it. So the rules may be the same, but the exposure has changed. Okay? So what happens? I tweet that out, I text that out, the word fire. Problem? Based on what I just told you? Sure. Because a lot of people are going to see it. Slight difference from when I had the word fire on my shirt, right? Now, maybe some people will see that, but it's not that large of an audience as you might see on Twitter or on Facebook or, you know, if you send a text out to a number of people, okay? How about if I send out a text or a tweet that says all Dodd eighth graders cheat. Now you gotta be careful with this answer. Okay? Can you guys whisper we the people? And you know why? That's good. It's not like I'm in church for a minute. You understand why they're whispering now? Because if I send out or if I post something on my Facebook page that says all Dodd students cheat, eighth grade students cheat. Who's going to see that? Now, your friends may see it, and some of it maybe your colleagues and friends here in Cheshire, whatever it may be. But if somebody, you know, in Iowa or, you know, India, South America sees that, what's their reaction going to be? What's a dot? Right? Cheaters. You got it. Now, if that happens, are we dealing with we the people? And remember something, that is the amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Is there a problem if somebody reads that in India or South America? You guys study the Constitution, why not? Somebody said no, why no? Why no? There's a we the people, but it's a different we the people. You're on the right track. There's no U.S. Constitution in India, right? Our laws don't apply there. So what happens when I send something out that literally goes all over the world? Good question. Is that covered in the First Amendment? Probably not. Okay? So that's the problem you're going to run into. You're going to be in that situation where you're going to have to figure out how your freedoms expand and how your freedoms contract. And that's the point that you're going to have to figure out yourself, okay? And with our world changing, as has happened today, the rules may or may not be the same. There's not an awful lot of law on the effect of the First Amendment on the internet, on social media, on tweeting, on Facebook, on texting. There's just not that kind of law there yet, because it really hasn't been around that long. The First Amendment's been around since 1787. The Internet's been around since about 19, in its present form, probably about 1993. Little difference there, okay? 
How do the courts react to this? How do they deal with this conflict of, Thomas tells me it's not in the First Amendment, and the word in there, you guys all agree with me, the most important word is freedom. How do we deal with that? How do we deal with the versus, I can do anything I want, it's a free country, right? How do we, how do we deal with that? Well, the courts look at it in a couple of different ways. The first one is pretty straightforward. Now, you guys go home from school and you say to your, your folks, well, I'm going to go over to my friend's house. And your parents say what? No. Okay? And of course, because you're all very smart eighth graders, you say what to your parents? Why? Why can't I go? And all of our parents, and this is like in, in this has been in like in parenthood forever, probably before 1787. Your parents will say, because I said no. Now, being that you're smart and you're starting to think about government and freedom and all this stuff, you say, well, why not again? And your parents always say this phrase, and I never could figure it out, you probably can't either. No means no. Okay. But well, believe it or not, that is the literal interpretation of the Constitution. Thomas has told us all morning long here, there's nothing in there that says I can't do these things. No means no. No means no. So you can go ahead and do whatever you want. That is pretty dangerous because there's a couple of interpretations of that. First of all, as I said, that amendment was written in 1787. Would you agree with me the world has changed a little bit since 1787? Yes. Now, obviously, I just talked about you know, something that's happened in the last you know, 18 or 20 years with social media. That's one thing. But look at all the other things that are in the Constitution that's changed. So there is this struggle back and forth of whether no really means no. Now, don't go home and say that to your parents. The judge said no doesn't mean no. No still means no because it's not there. But court opinions and court interpretation of that amendment has changed. And how it has changed is this. The courts develop what they call a balancing test between Thomas saying no means no and that's how it works. The, whatever's going on, me having the word on my shirt, me tweeting that you all cheat, whatever it may be, a court is going to look at that and say, whose rights are we dealing with here? One side being the rights of me to express myself, and Thomas has told me there's nothing in there that says I can't do it, versus people being affected and potentially hurt. Like if I come in this building and I scream the word fire, and chaos ensues. That's the situation. Now, here's the problem with a balancing test, okay? A couple of you guys in the front row, stand up. Stand up. Just not everybody, just a few people, stand up. Okay, turn around and wave to everybody. Hi, how you doing? Okay. Now, stand on two legs as you're doing right now. Okay, are you totally balanced? Pr pretty much? You're totally balanced. Okay, this is when, well, what do we do? It says no, but we the people. It says no, you're still balanced, right? Right? Okay, now stand on one leg. And now bend a little bit one way or the other. You're already kind of tipsy-turvy like you're on the water, right? That's, go ahead, put your leg down. That's, that, you guys obey really well, thank you. You guys can sit down, thanks. See what happens when you start balancing or unbalancing? Well, I, I've got some rights and well, I've got some rights. What do we do? That's why we have courts. And the courts will make those decisions. And as happens all the time, happens to me every day, every time I make a decision, whether it's something like this or something else, somebody's not happy. But when somebody's not happy, 
they tend to back off and say, a court has spoken, this is what I have to do. And that goes back to what is the glorious part of that document, which is the first three words. Because the people are the ones who are in control here. If the people don't like a law, or don't like someone who's been elected and brought us a law, what do you do? You change the law. Until then, you obey it, but you change the law. And that's the beauty of that document that you've studied. It says certain things, but it's interpreted certain ways. It changes, and it ebbs, and it flows. And you can pretty much say that about the interpretation of the entire document, the interpretation of any amendment in a document. It ebbs, and it flows, and it changes based on our times. I guarantee you, before you graduate from high school, you all want to graduate from high school, right? Yes. Before you graduate from high school, you'll start to see and read about court decisions, and there's some already, about the internet, about social media, about Facebook, the world, and that amazing document, which is on the wall outside this room, and you studied, <coughs> changing and ebbing and flowing. It's pretty amazing what they did between 1776 and 1787. It's an amazing document. Okay? That's all I'm going to say about it right now. If you guys have any questions about that, you want to ask me.